It says, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength. This has been one of my favorite scriptures to teach. I haven't taught it in a long time, but if you've been around for a long minute, this uh, is like one of my go-tos, talking about the angelic realm. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, and hearkening to the voice of his word. I always talk about how the voice of God is the voice of God, but the voice of his word is when you say uh, what the voice of God has said. So when we say the word of God, they move when we speak the word. When I looked up that word, I looked up the word strength because I said, it gotta be something in that scripture that describes what's happening in the room. Because I know angels can be on assignment. I know angels can be given assignment in prayer and uh, prophetic instruction as well. Yes, sir. They can be on apostolic assignment and prophetic instruction. But every time you all would uh, bear witness with the presence, it would be sudden moves and of the angelic. And they weren't moving because we were given instructions, we weren't given any commands. We were, they were just moving because we were moving in the presence. I said, what is that? And I looked at this word, the Lord told me, he said, that's, that's because they don't just move at words. They move in praise, they move in presence. So then he said, it's, I said, okay, where is that? And he said in some, you know, this one of my old favorite scriptures. And he said, it's the part that says they excel in strength. I always thought that like, they just get stronger, but they are most active in atmospheres that are full of the presence of God. So every time we became one in the presence of God, it sped up the activity. Wow. So then I wanted to see what it was and he read, of course. And this is some trippy stuff. So it means to be firm, vigor. It means force. It could be a good and a bad sense. And that makes sense because they was killing people in the Old and New Testament. It means capacity. It means produce. That's interesting. So wherever the presence of God is, the angel's job is to make that atmosphere produce for you. Wow. Now this is what tripped me out. One of the definitions is a large lizard. Now, you know, a seraph is a uh, flaming serpent, by definition. You get what I'm saying? So it makes, you know, it, it, it gives understanding to why when and Lucifer fell from heaven, one of the first things he shape shifted into was a snake. He didn't have to possess a snake. He was already a snake. And that's why the Bible talks about the dragon in, in the New Testament. Yes, and it refers to the dragon as the old serpent. Wow. That's some stuff. Oh, <laughs> it's some crazy stuff. Yes, it's, when I even, you know, I'm, I'm about to, you know, my, my wills, you know, these ancient. What's interesting about the Black Panther movie is how it sources ancient uh, demonic deities, like even in the new one with the, uh, the serpent time and how this is a real religion, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a reality of this entity that they see as a deity. You get what I'm saying? Yes, and how they associated this thing to a serpent because it has its trace and its origin to original angelic beings. And we know that idolatry in the Old Testament was not the worship of a false god. It was a false god because it wasn't a god. But it wasn't a false god in the sense of religion. It was a false god because it wasn't a real god. But it was a real entity. I believe it's Leviticus. I mean, I'm, I'm shooting with this one. It's, it's Leviticus or I'm pretty sure it's Leviticus. When it talks about idolatry, it says they worship uh, devils who came up out of a pit. So when they worship and they sacrifice to these demonic entities, it's because they were having encounters from these demonic entities and they were offering them empowerments and knowledge and things like that to uh, mask themselves as God. They wanted to be worshipped as God from the people. Am I going too deep? No, sir. No, sir. So they had all these false gods, you know, all this Hinduism and all this, uh, even Abraham, he was polytheistic. He, he was basically an Old Testament Hindu. 
So the Old Testament is full, is laden of uh, the worship of false gods from Baal to Ashtoreth and all this stuff and uh, Dagon and all these entities. And, and it makes sense that these people had demonic encounters because one of the gods of the many gods of the Philistines that was Dagon was the god of a people who was a hybrid creature. They were descendants of ancestors who had slept with fallen angels. You get what I'm saying? Yes, so it kind of makes ties to there is a reality of these people really believing, like these Egyptian culture and this uh, ancient Samaritan culture and um, this Hindu, new Hindu culture is more the modern example of what it used to be. It gives understanding to why they really believe in this idolatry because these were demons that were encountering people. And they were um, convinced that these spiritual entities had power to do what they said they were able to do. So they were sacrificed to them because the demons wanted what God was supposed to get. They wanted sacrifices and offerings and worship and they wanted homage and commitment and they wanted the same thing because they wanted to be like God. You get what I'm saying? Yes, so when you see their the the descriptions of their deities and the artwork and you know half animal, half this, and you see things that look like what the Bible describes as living creatures, and you see snakes with wings and all that kind of stuff, they basically were little fallen seraphs. Only one third of that of, of that order failed. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So the stuff we read about in the Bible, the stuff we read about in the Bible that still exists in heaven, the ones that don't exist in heaven anymore came from those orders. So they were half human and half this and half this and hybrid this and the Chronicles, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia and all this stuff that we see in mythology is because they were really encountering these things. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so back to this. There's something, so th dealing with the snake nature, I always wondered why he said be harmless as doves and wise as a snake, because we always painted the snake evil. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The snake was a seraph, and a snake represented wisdom, and a snake represented strategy, apostolic strategy, when Jesus said be wise as a serpent. And Solomon said, I've seen a whole lot of things but these couple of things I've seen that I just can't understand. The way of a woman with the man and the way of a snake on a rock. And the nature of a snake is to outsmart a hard place. That's a heavenly feature. So it's something about the presence of God because in, among the highest order of angels exist those seraphs. And they exist to minister to the presence of God. Those are the ones that Isaiah saw. They were key part of angelic service inducting him into his prophetic hood. He would have not had a prophetic ordination. He would have not had an inauguration in the prophetic ministry if he had not been in the presence of these angels. Wow. And they were flaming snakes. So there's something about the presence yeah. of God that creates an environment for that nature to thrive. Oh. And it's called strength. It's something about the presence of God that becomes a habitat for a snake on a rock. That's something else in it. Is it a large lizard? They, I mean, we read Godzilla all this time and didn't know it. It's something about the presence of God that embodies that type of, that type of strategy and that type of wisdom to maneuver in hard things and give victory. Maybe that's why the word is called strength when it says the angels excel in it. In other words, it's a friendly environment for them. I'll move on. And then it says ability, able. I'm going to skip this definition and come back to it last just for the sake of preaching it. Force, <laughs> fruits, might, power, strength, substance, Wealth, that's not the last one, but I'm going to stop there before I go to the last one. Angels excel in strength in one of the definitions as well. One of the job of angels is to produce an environment of prosperity. 
But this is the this is the one that tripped me out. Chameleon. To me, that's the cherry. I like the money thing, but that right there is the cherry on top. Because it explains the lizard, it explains the, the flaming serpents, it explains the seraphs, it explains the way of a serpent on a rock. Because the, the ability of angels hmm, is to basically morph into whatever is necessary in the moment. That's some deep stuff in it. Maybe that's why he said, all oh, my angels are ministering spirits. Because the highest service is whatever you need. Yes, sir. You know you found some good concierge when you show up and they say, whatever you need. Wow. You at Motel 6, if you show up and they got a list of things that they do and don't do. <laughs> but when you show up to the top notch of service industry and the hospitality industry, and you paying top dollar to be there, they will, they will pull any rabbit out of a hat because their motto is whatever you need. That's the angelic world. You in the presence of God, they morph to take on ability and strength to get whatever done that needs to be done on the basis of whatever you need. I've never taught that in my life because I've never seen it in my life. Until I saw, now I was trying to figure out you know, what was going on in the atmosphere because of what I was seeing. I'm used to angels moving because of apostolic and prophetic ministry and things. I'm, I'm used to it being strategic and intentional. When we just going up in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues and worshiping God and praising God, all of a sudden I'm seeing very fierce and fast and swift angelic activity. I'm like, what is this? Because I don't care what I see in the spirit. If I can't find the Bible, I'm not going to land on it. So he took me to the Word. But I got more than what I bargained for. I found out that they don't just move to words, but I found out the strength and the power of the environment that they move in. And I found out like a secret cheat code, secret sauce cheat code, angelic ability that I never saw in my life. And that is their ability to morph into whatever you need, whatever you need it. 